Amelie Morales is a happy, albeit stubborn, four-year-old. She likes what she likes, and for the last few weeks, that has included a nightly reading of her favorite bedtime story, There's an Alligator Under My Bed. This is more than a bedtime ritual for her. Amelie is deaf. She uses American Sign Language, or ASL, to communicate, and her mom, Laura Morales, is trying to keep up with her in the time of COVID-19. She tells me, like, every morning, is it time for school? She signs it. Time for school? And I'm like, no, sorry, you're staying home. And she's like, why? Why? I want school. And, it, and it's hard because I'm still not at that stage where I can, like, explain to her why, you know? Morales knows ASL. Not all hearing parents of deaf children do. I grew up bilingual. And so to me, it was no question whether I should learn American Sign Language or not. And Amelie has another advantage other students may not. A teacher who's using social media to reach her students at home. I'm Stephanie Voss. I'm a preschool teacher at the Phoenix Day School for the Deaf, which is under the Arizona State Schools for the Deaf and Blind. Um, and I teach tiny deaf humans. Voss typically teaches two groups of three and four-year-olds for three hours each day, one group in the morning and one in the afternoon. When schools were ordered closed on March 16th, she set up a professional Instagram account under the handle Preschool Signs. She posts ASL storytime videos and activities students can complete with materials at home. Many of my students don't have full accessible language in their homes. Many of them are going to be going home to homes that are not language rich for them, unfortunately. And there has to be a way that we continue to reach them. That's the bigger challenge for the Arizona State Schools for the Deaf and the Blind, or ASDB. Kelly Creasy is the principal at ASDB's Tucson campus. Her school serves about 130 deaf or blind students, about 45 of whom actually live on campus. They went home for spring break before schools were shuttered, and they haven't been able to come back. We see kids that struggle, you know, during when they know a break's coming up. You can tell that they're not looking forward necessarily to being away from us for an extended period of time. And so I think you know, as long as this goes on and potentially if we don't come back until next school year, that's going to be a really long time for some of these kids to go without that direct communication. Children who are blind may face similarly limited opportunities at home. We really believe in their independence and we just kind of let them go on campus. They have that freedom to walk about unassisted and families sometimes struggle with that out in the community. And so those students may not be going out in the ways that they are used to or have that same sense of independence. For now, Creasy and her staff have to focus on what they can do for students. Creasy, like school leaders across the state, will have to figure out how best to achieve distance learning sooner rather than later. State lawmakers passed legislation to allow teachers to reach students in alternative formats, but they didn't get specific about what that would look like exactly. That will be up to district and state officials. Meanwhile, Creasy is preparing her staff for the possibility that they might not get back to their classrooms this school year. Morales doesn't want to think about that possibility. It just it terrifies me because I think of all the things that she's missing out right now, and each day counts. Amelie lights up when she sees her teacher, Voss, on Instagram. She tries to sign to her, telling her about her dog and the activities she's done. Voss hopes they'll have those conversations for real again soon. They need so much language and that's so much time. And our time is so short and precious already that the fear that I could have already taught them their last day this year. I'm I'm trying really hard not to um, think about that. I'm really hoping that we can at least wrap up our time together and hopefully send them off on a on a really good, high, positive note. Until then, she'll keep it light on Instagram with help from friends like the Very Hungry Caterpillar and Brown Bear Brown Bear, hoping to reach tiny deaf humans everywhere. Katie Campbell, KJZZ News, Phoenix.